part two. Okay, so I aired up the tires. Uh, these these four had 48 pounds in them, in them, and these four had 28 pounds in them. And the according to the book, the tire pressures are very crucial. So we made sure to get those spot on, or I made sure to get those spot on. Now I'm going to throw some grease at the wheel bearings. Because I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Actually, I'm going to unhook this air hose first. I need to put some tef Teflon tape on this turkey. It's kind of loose. Might as well wrap her up too. Why not? Cool. Close the valve. Shut the compressor off. Get these wrapped up. Okay, that's that's all nice and pretty. So, meander over here, grab my grease gun. So if you noticed, we don't use an electric grease gun. We use a hand pump grease gun because, I mean, we don't, we go through plenty of grease, but we don't go through enough grease where it would be a lot easier or any cheaper to have an electric gun. So, and on top of that, the th electric grease guns are great, fantastic things, but I don't like that I can't really listen for any cracking, popping coming out of the grease seal because I don't I don't want that to happen. I don't want I don't want that to be the reason any bearings go out. But otherwise I've thought about getting them in the past for big things like uh well like these wheels for example. I just put 15 shots of grease into them. That would have been great. But do we need it? Not really. I think Grandpa has one, but we don't really use it ever. So great machines, just don't, just not what we, what we use. The hand pump grease guns work fine. I mean, it's a little hard on the hands by the end of the day, but overall, it's not terrible. And then.
Or like there, I just put 30 shots of grease into a bearing. <laughs> that was a lot of grease. Probably needed it. I don't know if you could or if you heard that or not, but that one cracked when it got full. So that just told me that it's full. So that's why I like to use a hand pump grease gun. It just, I, I like listening. I don't like the noise that comes from the electric ones. So I've done what I can, or I've greased what I can grease under here. Ouch. Oh, hunched over like that does, does a guy no good. So I'm gonna get stuff cleaned up, get the doors closed, and we're going to go get some pig feed. That'll be fun. That'll be really fun. I've never gone, never gone and picked up pig feed before. Never picked up any feed period. We just, we were going through so much uh, feed from like L&M that we decided maybe it'd make more sense to just go get like a tote or a gravity wagon worth of pig feed. So that's what we decided to do. Uh, I think I'll just leave all my stuff here. I don't think it's in danger. I hope it's not in danger anyway. The book, I'll put that over with the egg leader book. Uh, this is the... Oh my goodness! Oh, this bag. It gets heavier every time. I'm just gonna go set this up here somewhere. Okay, that was a haul. Man, that tractor looks good with a globe on it. I like that. I like that a lot. It's cool. Up till this point, Grandpa had one tractor with auto steer in it, with integrated auto steer. And I remember that was cool. That was a ITC globe with a brown box and that was cool. But to outfit, to outfit this tractor with auto steer didn't make sense for me, the John Deere auto steer. So it didn't make sense to outfit this with a John Deere auto steer. I was able to get auto steer in this, the 8760, and uh, now the Rogator, all for a very reasonable amount of money, and all I gotta do is move the stuff around. Which, not a big deal. Not, that doesn't really concern me at all. It could only, that, that to me could only be a problem if you're, if you have somebody running equipment for you. So in my case, it just didn't, didn't make sense to have more than one set up per machine for, for all of the machines. Eventually I'd like to get a yield monitor in that combine, my 9500, and I'd like to get a 1200 for the sprayer. So then what I'll do is I'll get, I'll get another uh, steering control module and globe and screen and put all that in the sprayer and the combine. So I'll have the in-command 800 for the 8300 and the 8760. And what that'll be for, it'll be for seeding, chisel plowing, and field cultivating is what I'll use that 800 for. And I'd like to have a in-command 1200 for the rogator and the combine. So then I'll be, that'll be my yield monitor, my swath control, all that, all that good stuff. And then I can, I guess on the, from the 1200, you can even base your variable rate maps off of your harvest data. So that's, that's pretty cool. And that's another thing I'd like to get in the future is a fertilizer spreader, just a pull type something or other that I can throw on like grandpa's new tractor or the 8300 or if I get a smaller tractor here in the future. But yeah, so I'm just gonna get cleaned up here and then I'm going to run home.
and pick up Kayla. We'll grab the pickup, we'll head up to Fertile and get a bag of pig feed. A big bag of pig feed, 1,500 pounds. So stay tuned. We're back. <clears throat> so it's actually the next day. Uh, we went and got pig feed and as soon as we got home, we had a little issue and had to make an emergency run to Fargo. So that's why I didn't record anything uh, last night. But we're back now. So anyway, I'm just, I got the 8300 out here and the drills. I got these puppies, everything but greased. I still need to take the duct tapes off the cups, but that's little details. But here we are. Uh, English. So this is the in command 800. Uh, I don't want metric. Is that what time it is? 1046 on May 4th. Okay, we'll skip that for now. Single display. New setup. Uh, T. Symbols. Display nickname. Uh, we'll just say uh, no. Oh, what do we call this? Uh, we'll just say 100 uh, dash, dash one. 800 number one. We'll get a little sticky put somewhere up here. Get a little label maker uh, okay okay oh look at that we're in setup ooh management setup no configuration add uh, create a planting for coverage logging and guidance only operations Okay, I will, uh, I'll be, I'll be back momentarily. I'm going to call my buddy and see what to do because I'm new to this. So I'll be back. Now we're just getting everything set here. So this drill is a rear drawbar. Um, enter full swath with. So, yeah. We'll go 30 feet. Uh, yeah, I'll go 30 feet. Enters distance from hitch to application point. Front to back. Oh, dead. Okay, so I gotta go measure that. Oh. So I'll just kind of wing it. Five feet. Do it from the close. Okay, so now we'll go up here. You get this. here and see what it is in the center of the discs. Looks like 
we got 21 feet 8 inches. So 21.66, I believe. So we'll enter. Let's look at the work. 21.66 feet from hitch to application. Um, standard. Okay. Display source. Backup source. Radar. section check wonder what happens if I turn this on I think yeah so now that's on So this is set up under tillage because under the planting it needs to know that there's something back there. So we set it up under tillage because I'm using the guidance only. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Guidance. to crap farm I'll say a home farm field Houston we have auto steer oh yeah there we go that is awesome. That is cool. This is going to be fun. This is going to be really fun. Alrighty, so now, now we got that set up. Oh, it's got a light bar even. We can get hooked back up to the drills. <laughs> back up here and go see if we can get this truck moved now <laughs> all right I'll be back so it's the what day is it 9th of May on it's Monday the 9th on Saturday this past Saturday I was able to 
get this out in the field. Uh, came out this morning, discovered that I was I was meant to work on the drills, discovered that this had a pretty bad antifreeze leak. I hope I fixed it. It looks like I did. So hopefully problem solved. That was a new hose that they put on in Monoman that uh, they put it on when it was really cold out and it didn't, it must have just not mated properly to the nipples on the radiator in the tractor, but hopefully that's taken care of now. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call her a day. It's raining, it's wet. We got about an inch and a half of rain today. So I think our soil moisture is good and charged up, ready to go. We're pretty much ready to go. I have some odds and ends to take care of. Got to put the last of the discs on the drill. I ordered two chains for it this morning to get those, or to get one put on the section that runs 20 feet of drill. And then the seed tender needs to be ready and we're ready. So I think this video has been about, I don't know, four or five days in the making. So we're gonna sign it off here. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like watching, feel free to like our videos and subscribe and we're going to keep going. Got the auto steer set in the 8300 so that's raring to go. Next I need to put it in here. I don't know if I'm going to get to that this spring but I think when it comes it's going to come in a hurry. So thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Hopefully it dries out.